you say that if you match on the scale, it'll be baraba is equal to ba'ala, right? Now, if you see the, on the word scale, if you see on the word scale that daraba is equal to fa'ala, you would instantly know by seeing fa'ala, you would know that it is salafi mujarrat, right? Fa'ala is always salafi mujarrat. Now, if you see a four-letter word and you say fa'alal, and if you see fa'alal, you would know it is rubai mujarrat. Let me explain further. This word, word scale is not meant to distinguish between huruf asli and huruf al-zaid, but it is meant to teach us the formulas that are implemented upon words to make us understand the structure of the words. That is the basic idea of the word scale. Because obviously we make the this. This, we distinguish the letters and we distinguish the huruf asli from huruf zaid before bringing it into the word scale. For example, if we have taraba or we have barib, for example, or katib, right? We know alif is harf zaid. Therefore, on the word scale, it's going to be fa'il, right? So alif has come, we know alif by looking at fa'il. We know it is Sulati Mujarrat, right? The word is Sulati Mujarrat because Fa, Ain, and Lam are Huruf Asli and Alif is Zaid. So Fa'il is always from Sulati Mujarrat, right? Arf is one letter, uh, Arf, Alif is Zaid, right? Similarly, later on, when we are going to learn the verbs and the tenses, the past tense, and for example, the, uh, the future tenses, we would also have formulas that are implemented on these things. So for example, I use the word fa'il. We would instantly know that it is from fe'le amr, right? Fe'le muzare, we are going to use these words later on. Fe'le ma'di, fe'le muzare. Amr. So all of that is going to depend on the word scale, right? All of that combined together with the, the formulas that are going to come later on as well are going to depend on the word scale. And all of these tenses, all of these words, either from ism or fail, you know, singular or plural, masculine or feminine, uh, you know, or like tasnia, for example, in Arabic, which is used for two and not more than two, right? As I'd explained earlier, like in different languages and all of the languages, you either have singular or plural, but in Arabic, there's something in between plural and singular, which is tasnia. So if you see, for example, katabtuma, uh, for example, right? Or things like that, like for example, for, uh, Hassan, Hassanain, alayhuma, alayhuma salam, right? So we know instantly that it's used for two words, for, for two people, for two persons. Therefore, the word, if it's singular, tasnia, or plural, or, you know, a word is from, sing, from the past tense, or the future tense, or fail, all of these words, have to be brought into uh, the word scale in order for us to understand the word itself. For example, I'll give you a word, like for example, you'll say, uh, madrub or maktub, right? Or maftuh, for example. In maftuh, you will, when you bring it into the word scale, you will say maf'ul. Now maf'ul is, is, is maf'ul itself is a word used for this tense, right? And fa'il, so that's isme fa'il, isme maf'ul. Fa'il itself is a word 
to make us understand what it is, what, what it, the, the word is in itself, right? So the word scale is meant in, for us, in order for us to teach our students the formulas that are going to be implemented. And with these formulas, we would understand the structure, the basic structure of a word, and then we would know where this word is derived from, what this word is all about. Therefore, that's the, the main reason why we talk about the words here, right? Now, today, we're going to talk about three different kinds of word, three different kinds of letters that exist in, in words which make it different from each other. And we have made three categories of those words because of the letters that exist in those words. And these letters, when I say these letters, I mean huruf asli, the root letters, right? Not huruf zaid. Now, if Dr. you could please share the screen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The first thing that we need to learn today is that there are huruf illa, huruf illa like Iranians say, or huruf illa like Arabs say, is consists of three letters, wow, alif, and ya, right? These three letters are called huruf illa. Now, whenever you see these three letters, these three letters have the tendency of changing into other letters, like wow has the tendency of changing, but obviously there are rules for it, which we will learn later on. And sometimes it is sama'i and sometimes it is qiyasi. Now, I used the word sama'i yesterday as well for uh, when I said that the, you know, the sixth example that I had given was for naql makani Qalb makani sorry, where the root letters had changed, right? Uh, from one, one place to another. Foul fail had taken the place of ayanul fail, and ayanul fail had taken the place of foul fail. Now, this change, I had said, is sama'i. Sama'i means that the Arabs, over a period of time, because of using of that usage of language, they came up with these words which were not followed through a systematic way, but uh, it has come into the language. Therefore, we have no other choice. We can't make those words. Arabs have done it, and we have no problem with that. We're going to use those words as they are used, as people in Arab countries, Arab-speaking countries use it. And it has also been used in the Quran as well, because Arabic was the language that Quran was going to be revealed in, and Quran is revealed in Arabic. Therefore, the words that were used a lot by Arabs, even though they have changed into some other words, if the letters have changed or whatever happens, sometimes Quran also uses those words. So those words have come, become, uh, you know, part and parcel of the Arabic language. Therefore, those kinds of words that cannot be fit into any systematic of formula given to us are called sama'i. And qiyasi is something, the word, the words that have a proper system, that have a proper formula. Like for example, alim, you know that the three letter word is, is the root word and alim has come from that word. Or for example, if you see that one word alim has come from alama, right? Now, if you see the word alama, there is a rule. When I say that it is qiyasi, qiyasi means there is a rule to be followed. What is that rule? I'll give you an example. If you see a word kataba, and on kaf you see fat, on ta you see fat, and on bay you see fat. Now, 
if the two foul fail and ayn will fail, have fat on them, like kataba or daraba or nasara, nasara or fa'ala, so on and so forth. First two letters, first two root letters, huruf asli, fa'ul fail and ayn will fail. If you see these letters are fat, they have fat, then you can, you, the rule says that this word is changed into the other word, and you can you say kataba becomes katib, or daraba becomes darib. With seeing the fat on the first two foul fail and anul fail, you can add alif with foul fail to make it, for example, from nasra, you can make it to nasir. Kataba becomes katib. Right? Daraba becomes darib, so on and so forth. This is called hayasi. Hayasi means when a word comes through some rules and regulations which are implemented on the words. Right? Now, today we're all obviously talking about the hayasi words. All of the words that are discussed here are according to some rules and regulations. Now the first, I, I told you, as I said, and now we're learning that huruf illa is wow, alif, and ya, the three letter words, right? Are called huruf illa. Today we're going to discuss three kinds of words with three different kinds of huruf because of those letters that, that are there in the, in the words, you categorize, you differentiate them into, you bring them into three different categories because of those letters. For example, the category number one is either kalama is sahih or mu'attal. Mu'attal means that the word that consists of the, th the three, one of the three letters is huruf muattal. That's what muattal means. One of the three letters is huruf illa. And then if you find in a word that there is either wow or ya or alif, that word is called muattal. Kalamai muattal, right? Now, I. It doesn't necessarily mean that one of them has to be there of huruf illa to make it more You can have two letters that are, uh, you know, illa, wow, and alif, two root letters, right? Or ya and ain, if you find in a letter, in, in, in a word that are huruf asli, the root letters, then that would be called. But if you find in a word that none of these three letters are there, if you find, for example, the words that we have been using, taraba, kataba, fa'ala, you find that none of these letters that, can, that are there in these words are wow, alif, or ya. If none of these letters are there in the word, that word is called sahih. But if you find these three letters in any word, and these three letters that you find alif or ya are from huruf asli, then that word is called muattal. And I have uh, I've written down six examples of it on the paper that you see on your screen of huruf of kalamai muattal. Number one, muattalul fa. What does that mean? Muattalul fa means Fa'ul fail. The first letter is huruf illa. Like for example, wa'ada. So wa'u is fa'ul fail. And because wa'u is fa'ul fail, and wa'u is from huruf illa, it is called mu'talul fa. And therefore, the term used for that word is called nithal. 
when we say that the word is mithal, we mean that it is mu'atal ulfa, and by mu'atal ulfa, and by saying mithal, which is the term used for that category, we instantly understand that wow is there. Mu'atal ulfa, and you know the wow is there, so mu'atal ulfa, yani one of the letters, the first letter is either wow or ya or alif. Therefore, when we say mu'atal al-fa, we mean that it is mithal. That's a term used for that category. And the example that I've given is wa'ada. The second category in kalamatul mu'atal, kalamatul mu'atal is mu'atal al-ain. Mu'atal al-ain means that ain will fail is either wow or alif or ya. And the term used for that is ajwaf. Ajwaf is the term used for the word where ain will fail is either wow or alif or ya. So that's mu'talul ain. And the example that I've given is for the word qawl or qawala, right? So you see wow is there and wow is one of the huruf illa. Because of huruf illa and because wow is also the root word, you must understand that if wow was not the root word, but if wow was a zaid, then it wouldn't be it makes it because wow is from therefore we see that wow is anul fail is wow is one of the huruf illa if anul fail is one of the huruf illa then it is mu'talul ain, and the term used for it is ajwaf. The third category is mu'talul lam. Mu'talul lam, which means that lamul fail. Lamul fail is rufa'illa. Harfa'illa is an lam. The last root letter of a word is rufa'illa. Therefore, it's called mu'talul lam and the term used for it is naqis. Noon alif, af and sad. Naqis. Like ramaya. Right? Now, we move on to the fourth category. Like I said, it's not necessary that only one of the letters is uruf illa to make it mortal. There can be more than one uruf illa in a word. Like, for example, mu'atalul fa wa lam, which means fa'ul fail and lamul fail are from uruf illa. Like, for example, wafaya. And this, the term used for that is lafif mafruq. Lafif means com a little complicated, but mafruq means divided. As you can see, the foul fail. And lamul fail. The first letter and the last letter are from huruf illa. Now, this division between them, the word, the letter fa is dividing wow from ya. Therefore, we use the word mafruq. Farq. Mafruq. So, lafif and mafruq is the term used for mu'talul fa. Walam. And I've given you an example, Wafaya. 
And the fifth category is Mu'adalul Fa Wal Ain. Right? Mu'adalul Fa means obviously foul fail is from Huruf Illa. Harf Illa in this word, if in a word you find that the first root letter foul fail is Harf Illa. Then that word and also anul fail is arfa'illa, then it is called lafifa maqroon. Please scroll down a bit, please. Please scroll, scroll up a little bit, uh, Jaffi Sab. Lafifa maqroon. What does maqroon mean? Maqroon means near each other. Jaffi Sab, if you're listening, please scroll the paper up, please. Now, because the two letters, for example, foul fail and anul fail, because foul fail and anul fail are next to each other, and both of these were both of these letters are from harf illa, therefore. It's called Lafife Makroon. Jafi Sahib, if you can please scroll up to the, the page, please. Thank you. Yes. So therefore, Lafife Makroon is the term used for a word where the first two letters, Fa'ul Fail and Ainul Fail, are from Huruf Illa, right? Fa'ul fail and ainul fail are huruf illa. It's called mu'talul fa wal ain. And the term used for it is lafif maqroon. Like in the word wail, wail al musalleen. Like example, you see in the, uh, the verse of Quran. Now, wa is harf illa. Ya is harf illa. Wow is Foul fail. Ya is ainul fail. And lam is lamul fail. But because faul fail and yaul fail are from huruf illa, we call it lafife makroon. We call it makroon because both of the huruf illa are next to each other. Because they're next to each other. We use the word makaroon, which means harib from harim. For example, next to each other, near each other. Right? The last category is mu'talul ain wal lam. Mu'talul ain wal lam, which means that the second letter of the root word, of the root letter, the second root letter. And the third root letter are next to each other. Like for example, in the word Hayya. Hayya, if you open the word Hayya, like I explained yesterday in our class, Hayya, two of the Yas have, these are two of the Yas of Huruf and Mushaddad, and there is an Idram. Both of these letters have, have had a merger. Both of these ya have merged into each other to become one single letter. But in fact, there are two letters. Hayya. So it has come from the word Hayya. The two of the ya's that you see are in the end, but they're next to each other. Therefore, we use the word Makroon in the terminology as well because of the two last letters which are from harfe harufe ille but because they're since they're next to each other we say the word makroon and the term used for it is lafife makroon as you can see in hayya the two last letters are ya and ya again so ya in the center is ainul fail and the last ya is Lamul fail, right? And they're both next to each other, 
and also the same, once they are the same letters and next to each other, call it Bu'atalul Ain Wal Lam. Now we are going to move to a second category. If you can scroll a bit down, please, and I'll be talking about that category. Is the second category of kalima. And because of those letters, yes, today's I've, I've read a message that says today's message is difficult, uh, lesson is difficult, but it needs practice. I, I will inshallah explain late again and again. All right. If you can scroll up, I'll explain again. Very quickly, I will summarize the first category of the kalama. We have categorized the kalama into three different categories because of the difference of the letters that exist inside the word. The first category that we have just discussed is the kalama is either sahih or mu'attal. By mu'attal, we mean that the word that consists of, if you can scroll up, please. Scroll up, please. Jafri Sahib, if you can scroll up, please. Thank you. Huruf illa. Huruf illa are the three letter words. Wow, and, and ya. Right? If you find a word that can, that in which the three, one of the three letters are from huruf illa, which are wow, alif, and ya, it is called muattal. And there are six categories, six different kinds. Either the wow, alif, and ya, which are huruf illa, it will be in the beginning, the first letter is going to be wow, alif, or ya, or the second letter is going to be wow, alif, or ya, or the third letter is going to be wow, alif, or ya, or maybe the first and the second is going to be wow and ya, or the second and third is going to be wow and ya. You understand? So if there is wow and ya in these orders, these categories consist of these orders. So if you have understood, uh, we will move on to the second category. <clears throat> now the second category is that the word is either Mahmuz or Ghayr Mahmuz. Mahmuz means Mahmuz has come from, it is obviously Ismi Maf'ul, Mahmuz, the word Mahmuz. As you can understand, a word that consists of Hamza. If you find any word whose one of the letters, one of the root letters is Hamza, then that word is called Mahmuz. For example, the word Amara. As you can see in Amara, the first letter is Hamza. Only because in this word, any word that you see, if it has Hamza in it, it's called Mahmud. In this first word that you see, Amara, the first letter is Hamza. Therefore, it's called Mahmud. It's as simple as that, right? Now, because the first letter is Hamza, we call it Mahmuz, right? And we call it Mahmuzul Fa. By saying Mahmuzul Fa, we would know that from Fa Ainun Lam, first letter is Fa. So if we say Mahmuzul Fa, first letter is Hamza. By saying Mahmuzul Fa, we know that the first letter is Hamza. If we say Mahmuz Ul Ain, then we know that the second root letter is Hamza. Like for example, Sa'ala. Sa'ala, you see the scene is foul fail. And Hamza is Ain ul fail. And Lam is Lam ul fail. Therefore, it is Mahmuz Ul Ain. And the third example I've given is Mahmuz Ul Lam. Like in Qara'a. 
Para'a. Para'a, the last letter, which is Lamul Fail, is Hamza. So we call it Mahmoozul Lam. So either it is the second category is either Mahmoz. Mahmoz means a word, any word that has a Hamza in it is called Mahmoz. As simple as that. Any word that has a Hamza in it and it is a root letter, then it is a Mahmoz. That word is Mahmoz. But if it does not have a Hamza in it, it is called Ghayre Mahmoz. Please scroll down a little bit. Jafri Saab, can you scroll down, please? Yes. Mahmoz, as I'm saying, is the word that consists of Hamza. If there is Hamza in the word, it's called Mahmoz. If the first word, letter is Hamza, we call it Mahmoz al -Ba. If the second letter, Ayn al -Fail, second letter is obviously Ayn al -Fail. If that is Hamza, we call it Mahmoz al -Ain. If the last letter, which is Lam al -Fail, if Lam al -Fail is Hamza, if the last letter is Hamza, we call it Mahmoz al -Lam. And if you find any word that does not have a Hamza in it, you call it Ghayr Mahmoz. Jafri Saab, please scroll down the, let, the, uh, the page, please. Now, I've given an example, as you can see. Jafri Saab, can you hear me? Please scroll, scroll, scroll down the, uh, the page, please. I've given a word, A'lama. Example of Ghayr Mahmoz, A'lama. Now, A in it is Hamza. But I've still, I'm still saying Ghayr Mahmoud. Why? Because the first letter in A Alama Alif, the Hamza that you see, is not a root word. So only unless the root letter is Hamza, we cannot call it Mahmoud. Even though if we find that Harf Zaid, if the Harf Zaid is Hamza, we cannot call that word Mahmoud. If the root letter or the harp asli, as it's called, harp asli is Hamza, only then we call it Mahmoud. Therefore, Ghayri Mahmoud, I've given an example. Jafri Sab, please scroll up the, the, the page, please. Well, I think Jafri Sab cannot scroll it, or maybe it's not listening to me. Uh, he cannot hear me. Jafri Saab cannot hear me. All right. Now, the third and the last example is of Muza'af and Ghayr Muza'af. What do I mean by Muza'af? By Muza'af, we mean that there's two letters in it, even if they have merged into each other or they haven't are from the harf asli and they are next to each other for example if the ayn will fail or lam will fail of a word you see are from the same category no down 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 sir third third category yes there you go now in Muda'af, you see that the third category, the word that you see is Madda. And if you open that word, it becomes Madada. Now, the two Dals are the root letters and also the same letters from the same family, Dal and Dal, two same letters. And these two letters are also Ayn will fail and Lam will fail. Or any of the two letters. Let me explain, simplify it. If you find a word in which the root letters 
are the same and also huruf asli and are next to each other, that's called mudaf. Like an example, madda, which is actually madada. Dal and dal are root letters, huruf asli, next to each other, ain ul fail and lam ul fail are same letters, huruf asli. Dal and dal are same letters and are also huruf asli. If the same letters are huruf asli, then it is called muzaaf, like the word madda. Ain fail in madda and, and lam ul fail in madda are both the same letters and also huruf asli. Therefore, it's called Muzaaf. The next example that I've given, the other example is Dadan. Now, Fa will fail in Dadan is Dal. Ayn will fail in Dadan is Dal. Now, both of these Dals are same letters, are also Uruf Asli. Dal and Dal, two same letters. If the two same letters are huruf asli, then it is muzaf. It can be the last two letters or the first two. You find that the first two letters are same and also huruf asli. And in the other word, tadan, you find that the, that the first two letters, madda, sorry, the last two letters, and in tadan, you find that the first two letters are huruf asli. But if the first two letters you find are huruf asli, it's very, very rare in Arabic. But you find some words that are there. Therefore, we have given the example. Now, the word that is غير مزعف, you find a word like al-lama, right? Now, why have I put al-lama in غير مزعف? Because the two lams, one of the letter is Zaid. As I've already said that we're discussing about the letters that are huruf asli, right? Now, one of the lams is not asli, one of the lams is zaid. Therefore, even though you find two lams that are same, because one is not asli, we still call it ghayr muza, right? And kataba, for example, will be also ghayr muza. And Nasara, Alama, uh, Zaraba, all of these words that you find in Arabic, Alhamd, for example, um, or Rab, Rabbul Alameen, for example. But in Rab, yes, that would that that's a different uh, example. But over here, we need to understand that the two examples that I've given for Muzaf and Ghayr Muzaf is Muzaf is the word where the two root letters are the same. They can be the first two letters or the second two letters. In Madda, you find the last two letters, the same. In Dadan, you find the first two letters, which are the same. If the first two letters or the last two letters in a word are the root letters, then it is called Muzaar. But if you find all three, Fa, Ayn, and Lam are different letters, and our huruf asli, then it is ghayre muzaaf. I think that's enough for today, inshallah. And if I've made myself clear, if there are any questions, please go ahead. And tomorrow, inshallah, as we go on and on, we'll practice and inshallah, things will become even more clearer. Are there any questions, please? No? All right then. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajil faraj. May Allah give us strength to learn the religion of Ahlul Bayt al Hamdulillah the way that it is required to be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Ajahn, and uh, somebody just pointed out, Ajahn, that today's lecture was a bit. Uh, a bit complex, so if we can do a, 
uh, summarize revision later on, maybe in the next lecture before yes. we. Yes, we will summarize tomorrow again, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. All right, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much, all. Okay. So I'm going to end this session. So you all will be dismissed now. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam.